Thank you, Chair. And first, I want to add my voice to the concerns that have been expressed over the lack of transparency in the operations of the Code of Conduct Group and the lack of what I would consider to be a sincere um, cooper cooperation attitude um, in relation to um, the dealings with this Parliament in a general basis. And specifically, um, my group. Um, shares the concerns that have been expressed over the lack of transparency regarding the process of creating and modifying the tax haven blacklist. Um, the outcome of this process is completely unsatisfactory to us and to the Parliament more generally, um, because, uh, as we know and as has been said, most of the world's worst tax havens aren't actually on the list. You may know that earlier this year the Commission addressed this committee where she suggested, I would suggest maybe encourage that we lodge an official complaint with her and I hope that um, the Parliament will be doing that. It's something that our group fully supports. I have two specific questions relating to the modified nexus regime of patent boxes post-Brexit specifically and also in relation to the first phase of the blacklisting process. If we look back to how the OECD's modified nexus approach on patent boxes was initially agreed, it was largely a political compromise between Britain and Germany. Um, so given the role of Britain in pushing for even less restrictions on patent boxes, has there been any discussion on, of a change in the EU's approach to patent boxes in a post-Brexit scenario? Has there for been example any discussion among the Code of Conduct Group about uh, developing guidelines on patent boxes that are stricter than the OECDs or of shutting down patent boxes altogether? Um, and if this hasn't been discussed, do you consider it might be appropriate to start discussing that sometime in the near future? In relation to the blacklisting process, many of us are intrigued as to what exactly the criteria used to remove 20 countries from the list of um, 92 at the beginning of the listing um, processes. Um, among those are countries that were assessed for their risk and their level of economic links with the EU, such as the US, of course, um, but none of the publicly available reports of the Code of Conduct Group describe that criteria that actually um, took those 20 um, countries off the blacklist. So I was wondering if you would like to use the opportunity afforded to you today to actually outline the process and the criteria that was used in that instance. Thank you, Chair. Well, on the modified nexus approach uh, and the post-Brexit uh, at the moment, uh, um, I do not envisage uh, that there will be any consequence because the modified nexus approach that has been assumed by, used as the basis for examining IP regimes by the Code of Conduct is uh, the approach that was already agreed at the international level. And we have actually assessing, we have assessed the uh, patent box regimes act enacted by EU member states applying that regime. So once the UK would no longer be part of the EU still, you know, if uh, it, the UK will uh, change its patent box regime um, to make it more aggressive and no longer compliant with the modified nexus approach, uh, we will not, we, you know, we will, uh, we will uh, look at that situation as a dangerous situation in a third country, but <clears throat> before that, certainly there will be, you know, a reaction at the level of the OECD at the international level because uh, because the criterion is being agreed at that uh, at that level, and so much so that for. Um, you know, in all instances, I mean, uh, we we have always, we, our ministers, uh, have always uh, uh, pointed out uh, at uh, the importance uh, of the coherence and the consistency between uh, the exercise carried out at the EU level and the parallel work uh, uh, carried out uh, at the international level, no? not simply the OECD, because I mean uh, uh, there is, you know, the 
parallel work at the international level is for transpar the transparency criteria, the work done at the level of the Global Forum, for the Forum of Armful Tax Practice, the level is that of the inclusive framework, uh, and the same for you know the BEPS, uh, uh, the implementation of the BEPS minimum standard. So uh, it's always been the case that uh, we have uh, we, our ministers have always believed in the fact that the European level, the, 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 there had to be a synergy you know, between the European level and the international level because uh, the non-compliance with the, the principles of tax good governance um, or, or better, the compliance should be ensured at the global level. Uh, so basically, I mean, I don't think there is a point in that there is a relation between, I don't see a relationship, between, I wouldn't be concerned, you know, with what can happen after Brexit uh, with uh, the UK patent box regime. Um, for the, the comfort letter, the comfort letters have been sent to all the third countries and jurisdictions that have been screened. Uh, according to the criteria of uh, EU listing exercise and following the procedure that is, that is uh, uh, detailed in the documents that are, are published in the website. So, I mean, we have published on the website the procedure that uh, our experts assisted by the Commission service have used for the screening exercise. I mean, um, and, uh, and on the basis of that, uh, you know, in all cases where, uh, uh, where no non-compliance has been identified, we have, uh, you know, sent, we have written a comfort letter to the screened jurisdictions after carrying out a full screening with respect to all the three criteria.